Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome all of our zone coordinators and a lot of governors, governors elect and governors nominate to our quarterly all call for our coordinators. Our agenda is such that we will go round robin just arbitrarily to uh, let the, each of the coordinators in the two zones talk for a couple of minutes about things of note going on in their zones. Then we'll talk about some other items that are zone wide. And in this particular meeting, since the Council on Legislation is uh, coming up in just a few weeks, we'll talk Join the meeting. about the Council on Legislation. I would like to welcome three new people in. I think two of them sat in on our last call, but first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome some incoming coordinators, Patrick Eakes and Alex Wilkins to the call. And I also would like to welcome Steve Sluter from Florida, Zone 34 to the call. Uh, Bill Griffin, for personal reasons, had to uh, resign from his position and we, uh, well, uh, as the EM EMGA, was on 34, so we welcome Steve for that. And with that, I'll just kind of round robin, no particular order, uh, ask any of the coordinators if they have anything they'd like to uh, at, at talk about, and we'll start with you, Rocky. Rocky, you there? I'm there. I was just enjoying a little bit of a glass of water. Okay. You have to call on me, David, but that's all right. <laughs> Um, folks, I'm going to give a very brief report on polo, polio, very briefly, and uh, my colleague Chuck, uh, will give the what I don't say, plus a little bit more on his zones or his districts. But as I look at polio this year, uh, zone 33 and zone 34, and Bob will cover 34. We're not doing as well as we have in the past. I think most of you know that I work with five zones or four zones and one split in half. And they are killing us, folks. We are not doing that well. We're down in DDF. We're down in cash in 33. We're not that far down that we can't catch up, but we're not doing well. Three of the zones that I work with are all 20% DDF zones or more and their cash per capita is ahead of us. So something has happened in 33 and 34 because we were the leaders and we are not this year for whatever the reason. And I can't tell you where that lies. Uh, but I think working together, if we have a strong finish between uh, now and the end of the year. Join the meeting. And I want to give a special shout out to Mike Davidson, not the uh, not the guy who's the big money guy, but Mike Davidson, because his zone in West Virginia came really came through last month with, in February. And thank you for that, Mike. That finishes it, uh, David. Thanks, Rocky. There might be something going on here in that I know in Zone 34 last year, we've had uh, several arts club societies that were allocated to the Polio Plus, and that uh, may very well be happening in both zones. Uh, from okay, we got Rocky. Let's go to Chuck Davidson. How about it, Chuck? Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. I uh, would like to say that, uh, of course, I endorse what Rocky just said, but uh, uh, where we are really hurting the most is in cash. Uh, our DDF is coming along, as he says. It's uh, not as good as it could be, but it's uh, it's acceptable. It's the cash that's hurting us the most, and uh, that's where we really need to spend our time and our effort on polio. Uh, as far as uh, my own uh, five districts that I pay closest attention to within Zone 33, uh, I am pleased that two of them are in the top five in the zone in total DDF plus cash. So all of the new. Chuck, you got muted somehow. Did you I think your bandwidth stopped. If, go, Chuck. Did, are you finished? David, did you hear my report okay? We heard most of it. Uh, I, your bandwidth kind of froze up there for a minute, but we'll go with that, okay? 
I think I have nothing else to add uh, except that uh, uh, we're going to um, Okay, Chet, we're, you've muted again. So we're, uh, let's go to George Roberts from Burnett over in Florida and talk about RC. George? Uh, good evening, one and all. George Roberts from Burnett, Zone 34, Rotary Coordinator. We're having a great time here. We've just done uh, PETS. Join uh, the meeting. Florida, and also, uh, I was delighted to be invited by 6900 up to Georgia PETS. It's a great opportunity for us as Rotary Coordinators to get in. Uh, on the ground floor with the president elect. So that was absolutely fabulous. We had a tough start to the year um, because of the, the purging of the membership roles that happens now because of the semi annual uh, invoices. Uh, and so we got down to only plus 100 uh, in January. We fought our way back as of this morning. We are plus 463 members in the zone. We have 10 of our districts in plus. We have four districts which are marginally down. We obviously know that June will be coming and the second purge and larger purge will be coming. Whether we sustain in, in positive territory uh, remains to be seen. Uh, as far as um, uh, I wanted to pass on something for the district governors uh, who are on the call. The Rotaract and Interact Awards uh, are due with me by April the 15th if your clubs are participating. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, some of our districts uh, have just appointed some fabulous district membership chairs uh, for next year. We all got together this weekend uh, with the, also with the Rotary Coordinator team and our, our MO, Rebecca Holloway, and it was a great weekend. Uh, we're gonna have a great year next year, I predict. Thank you. And while we're with the Rotary Coordinators, let's go over to Chris Jones in Zone 33. Chris, hey there. everybody, just joined. So what are we talking about, David, just so I'm up to speed? Your a uh, couple of minutes about things going on in Zone 33 as a rotary coordinator. Great, so things are continuing to move along very well uh, in Zone 33, excited about that. We are, uh, let me take a quick look here. So we're up 220, sorry, 243 members year to date, uh, which puts us, at about number tied for fourth place in the US. Um, other things that are going on, uh, we introduced a new curriculum at Carolina's Pets this past weekend, which I think was received very well. Um, at least that's the reports that I'm getting back. And the, the curriculum at Carolina's Pets is more aligned with the training that we've been uh, doing throughout the rest of the zone. So. Now the president's elect are all hearing the same thing that everybody else is hearing as the training's going on, which is always a good thing from an alignment perspective. So that's the high level stuff. So while we're uh, basically in the rotary coordinator thing, since we've heard from 33 and 34, a couple of things I like, would like to interject. Last year, the uh, international award for the alumna uh, was given to a lady up in district 7600. Uh, Coach Z is the district governor this year, and at the January board meeting, the uh, Rotary Foundation Alumni Association for the award for the entire world was awarded to 7,600 uh, Coach Z's district, where we were in Norfolk, goes up into Williamsburg. So I was very excited about those two things. Um, while we're also talking about that, uh, talk a little bit about the 10 million mil challenge. Uh, when a club goes on to the website and signs up for, to be in the challenge, what that does is that sends an email to the food bank nearby to that club to say, so that they can reach out and know that the club is interested. Uh, for the last two months, uh, or actually three, probably three months now, it started kind of slow in January, but I'm getting three or four emails a day now where I get a blind copy where clubs are signing up. We've got a lot of clubs that have actually signed up for the, for the giving. One thing that I've got to get really onto the marketing with, with the governor's elect is that we're doing a lot of stuff out there already. I've monetized a, several million meals just on what I see on Facebook already. What's happening though, we're not getting into my rotary at the club level and our district level and logging those, uh, that monetary 
points, monetized points into uh, my rotary uh, under our club service hours. So got, got to start doing some advertising on that, get us to speed. But we are way down the road uh, toward the 10 million miles. It was over just this past weekend in uh, District 7770 on the Carolina coast, and they did 50,000 meals in a couple of hours. So it's really catching on. And, and from the signups that I see, it's all over the zone that we're see- both zones that we're seeing the people signing up. Okay, let's uh, go to the Rotary Foundation. How about it, Nancy? Nancy Barbie. Okie dokie, I had to unmute, sorry. Um, That was my major, one of my major things that I was gonna announce, so you've already done that, and congratulations goes out to 7600 for the Alumni Association Award. They will be recognized in Hamburg, uh, which is a really big deal, so we're really proud of them. Um, So far, in zone 33, $3 million dinner, dinners slash challenges have taken place and have yielded close to $5 million in for the endowment. And I understand there's more money that is coming in. So uh, great job for those three districts. I attended all three of those events and they were outstanding and a lot of good support and, and good, um, good camaraderie and inspiration there. Um, I've been to the pets in West Virginia for the new district. Um, They're really on fire. Those two districts really worked together for that pets. And I was really uh, glad to see a lot of collaboration between uh, the the clubs in both areas. And they're they're talking about doing grants and projects and things of that nature. Uh, So I'm looking forward to working with that that district. Um, Zone 33 is up for annual program fund, another 5.6% from last year. This time, uh, the total so far is over 5 million, close to 6 million. My only concern is we have a number of, which is about typical for this time of the year, a a number of non-giving clubs. So my team will be working on those clubs to make sure that, um, that we have everyone contributing something to the annual program fund because typically zone 33 is is a zero non-giving zone uh team training is coming up april 29th and 30th for our teams our coordinator teams and then the leadership training will be at the end of june and that's it for me okay thank you nancy and we'll stay with the foundation, go to zone 34, Ivan Johnson. You hear me okay? Yeah. <clears throat> um, very briefly, we're up 1.5%. Uh, I had hoped it would be more. Our goal was 3.5%, uh, but we're still working on it. We're up in uh, per capita, we're up in total, we're up in Paul Harris Society, uh, but only slightly. I've still got four districts which have become somewhat problematic they're they're down at least 25 percent from last year and so that's where we're going to put our attention uh believe it or not we had some very successful like puerto rico they're up 21 percent from last year even though they had the substantial damage uh 70 20 also up 21 percent so uh, we've got some bright spots but obviously some places that need work. Uh, We also have team training. We did not fit that in. George and Sheila and I have got that set for the Zone 34 seminars, June 22nd, 23rd, and we're doing the foundation team training uh, the day before on Friday the 21st. Um, That's about all we have right now obviously there's some things going on in the background that uh, we're working on we're we're rebuilding our team Um, it's kind of funny how people like to play games (laughs) anyway uh, we're on the road okay thanks Ivan let's stay in 34 and go to Bob Hagen for in polio now Bob you're muted There we go. There we go. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Well, uh, Zone 34 is up and at them. Uh, 
we are doing well on cash. Uh, we can always do better, but we've had two uh, new arch clumps and that has helped. And we also had a death that uh, their estate left us uh, $100,000 for polio. So that's helped with our cash. Um, our DDF funds are not good at all. We only have six districts that have committed. That's behind last year this time of uh, three, we had nine. We have 14 uh, districts, so we're, we're way down on DDF funds uh, with just a few months to go, so I'm a little concerned on that. I've talked to the district governors, district governor elects and uh, pushing that. Uh, two or three of them are saying they will get their forms in. That's very important, so uh, we will push ahead on trying to get them to commit to the DDF funds. So all in all, uh, we've had good, a couple good pets. We've got a couple of district assemblies coming up. Uh, I've spoken to about 17 clubs this year, so uh, that's been good about polio. So, uh, of course, you know, we're, we've still got two countries and uh, still got a little bit of work to do, but uh, we're on board to move forward. I'm going to jump in here to between Mike and Bob, or Bob and Mike coming up. If I heard the story correct, and maybe someone from Georgia can correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the gentleman who is an Arch Club member from North Georgia was invited to Georgia Pets to speak this year. And uh, he got up and he spoke about giving to the Rotary Foundation, made a plea for Arch Club Society members and said, I will match every contributor or the first four contributors per year of $250,000 each. The way I heard the story was that as, after that session was over, a lady came up and said, uh, would you stay here and wait five minutes while I go to my room? And he's like, for what? She said, I need to get my checkbook. And he's like, I, well, I guess I, of course I'll wait. And it was a president elect that went up to her room, came back and wrote the Rotary Foundation a check for $250,000. Somebody that was there can verify that. I've heard it. I've been told several times that. Um, that, it, to me, is proof positive. It never hurts to ask for contributions to the Rotary Foundation because you never know who is in the audience. This lady would have been more looking for the place to go to give, and she found it by hearing uh, Tommy Bagwell speak at, the, at a Georgia Pets. And uh, let's go over to Zone 33, Mike Conrad for In Paleo Now. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir, we can hear. Uh, it's not, I'm, I'm going to talk about major gifts and bequests for Zone 33. And uh, we're actually, I think, having an excellent year uh, in Zone 33. Uh, our major gifts are up 80% from last year. And I think more impressive is we have 19 more gifts than we did last year. And this is as of the end of January. My, Reports are typically on a month-like basis, so I should be getting February any day now. As far as bequests, they're 12% ahead of last year, and we are, uh, that's 21 more gifts than we had last year this time. Uh, we've had a couple cultivation events, uh, working with uh, the chairs of a couple of our areas of focus with Ann Matthews, with basic education and literacy. Uh, we had an event, a cocktail party in Hilton Head and had 30 plus folks there uh, interested. Uh, Carl Davis as well as Nancy was involved in that. And I think we have a, some interest out of that. So that was a very positive uh, uh, meeting. As well as we just following that the very same week, we had a water and sanitation event at the homestead and uh, for Rose, uh, as well as Laura Menzel, our major gifts officer for that area was involved. So, uh, and we got a couple uh, prospects out of that as well. Uh, as Nancy indicated, we've had three uh, million dollar initiatives. Uh, I can speak certainly to 7690 uh, that we had our celebration just last month. Uh, with Barry, uh, R.I. President Barry and Esther there, as well as David and Kim uh, and Matthews and Nancy was there as well. 
And I do know that we have 7,600. I've been working with Stephen Beer, and they're beginning the process to start a million dollar uh, initiative in uh, District 7,600. So that's my report. Okay, Mike, and uh, nobody from Georgia would come through and correct me on the technicality except for my wife in the other room. And she says that technically the lady did not write the check. She wrote uh, uh, in cash, but she did commit and followed through later with giving a quarter of a million dollars in an irrevocable trust. So at any rate, the money came. I, I apologize for the technicality, but at least Kim got me right there. While we're up in uh, Zone 33, let's go to uh, Brenda Shaw and talk about public image. Brenda. Okay, I think I'm unmuted now. Uh, our team's been going to pets and to district conferences. We've got several di district conferences left to attend. And the uh, times that the assistants cannot get to these events, I've been going. So uh, we have a lot of activity there. We also have our latest send out of the public image citation for this year. And those are due July the 15th. But any of the districts that want to present them to their district conferences have asked for those to be done early and we have taken care of that. Um, another thing that if you're missing donations to your uh, foundation, you might want to try the program that we've been promoting through the uh, public image section where we have Rotarians and their business associates that have been going to the uh, ESP website where they can buy everything from bags or tissue for their district conferences to t-shirts, notices about hurricanes, any of the projects that they're doing like 5K runs and the company that they buy from will give them a 5% donation back to their foundation, to the Rotary Foundation under the name of that particular club that calls in the order. So we've had a lot of participation so far and I'm looking for participation from others because I'd like to see every district in the zone to come up with an additional Paul Harris fellow every year out of these donations. I think that's everything. We've just done a mail out through the United States Post Office of the public image citation, feeling that sometimes people are a little bit watered down with getting too many emails. And so we sent our public image citation out by mail this time, and that worked greatly last time. So uh, we're moving uh, right before the meeting started. I checked Facebook because we teach social media in public image. And in about five minutes, I had 21 hits from Rot Rotary governors or PI chairs uh, just in zone 33 on things that they were doing. So there's a lot of action, people of action out in the Rotary world right now. Okay, Brenda, thank you very much. And let's go over to the islands and uh, hear from Sheila Bethel. Sheila. Sheila, you're muted if you can hear us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -oh. Can you hear me? Yes, we have okay. an echo, but we can hear you. Okay, good. Um, oh, gosh. I know. Sorry. Sorry. I'm getting feedback from my phone. Um, yeah, we the public image citation for Zone 34 um, have started to come in. Our deadline's April the 15th, so um, you know we should be swamped in the next few weeks. Um, the new I don't know what's happening with this Dan. So. The new um, citation has gone out. Um, also, this year, I made sure that all the uh, the citation is in English, French, and Spanish, which, if you remember, Rotary asked us to uh, put information out in the languages that are current in our, our districts. Uh, we've held two Zoom webinars so far this year. We've had about 130 attendees in total. 
Uh, we're getting lots of questions and feedback afterwards and has, it's generated a lot of interest. Our next session is on April the 9th and all the PowerPoints and recordings for this are, are on our public image web, website, myrotarystory.org. We're also getting a lot of hits on the site now. I have Google Analytics on there. Um, the link to the site's also on our zone site. Um, we've been, the coordinators for Zone 34 have been meeting to get the seminar in June set up. Uh, Ivan mentioned it earlier, we, we're all ready to go and uh, the PI team is having a training session on uh, the 21st of June as well before the uh, seminar. Uh, we've been helping out where we can with anybody that's asking for assistance. Uh, Marshall Butler is still doing a sterling job with ProPresenter at uh, various events and uh, I know he was at Florida Pets as well. Um, I've been helping with design and layout for a lot of things. We did banners for Florida Pets and we'll also be using those at the Zone Seminar. I noticed also, George, that you had a couple of them at your membership uh, session. Uh, we've been reaching out to the incoming DGEs, the DGNs and the new DPICs, um, you know, telling them what we can do for them. And I was very interested to have several back and forth email conversations with the new brand specialist at RI, Liz Thiam. Um, she's very new. Brenda, you probably saw her email as well. Um, I've invited her to join us at our Zoom webinars. Um, um, we've been going to as many district conferences as we can and I've added one new member to the PI team for next year, William Innes from Cayman Islands. And that's it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, Sheila. Uh, just re realize, Sheila, before you go mute, so, or so, tell me, can you all see me on your screen when I'm talking or my blank screen? No. Okay. I have some kind of video issue, but the only way it once before it happened and the only way I could do it was leave the call. And so we'll just stay as is. It may have to do with the recording, but the next item on the agenda is to talk about items that uh, came up and happened at the board of directors meeting back in January. Um, several things of, several things of very much significance were, um, acted upon there. First of all, as most of you maybe know, if not, you can go to rotary.org in my, in my Rotary, and we are conducting a global membership test project, and a global membership that is not club-based. So uh, we voted to continue that for another year uh, after we did a pretty thorough review about what's going on now and what's happening now. There are 117 items currently in the uh, Council on Legislation and uh, coming up in April. We have just crossed the first meeting of the Council on Resolutions. We've never had that before. Everything was resolutions and adoptions and everything were done at the Council, but beginning with this year, we have a, a triennial or every, every year, Council on Resolutions, we re reviewed 16 resolutions to the Board of Directors that came from the Council uh, out of their online meeting. Uh, own, online meetings they, uh, and uh, online voting, and a lot more efficient, a lot easier to uh, handle it, and a, a lot less money for Rotary. Uh, which is one thing that the current board of directors has been uh, working on diligently. Already this year, we have cut the number of committees in half through either sunsetting of committees that needed to be, or through um, through sunset of committees where it needed to be, or through combine, combination of various and sundry committees into other committees. A particular note, I think, this at this past meeting, we approved the authorized the general secretary to work forward with Toastmasters International to develop and unlaunch an online branded product. Uh, first, we'll be made available to Rotaract clubs and then to non-club-based 
participants and Rotary Clubs. Ro uh, Toastmasters, the tenure of a Toastmaster member is usually about two years. Toastmaster has a lot of product that we think we could benefit from. They Three representatives were there, the, the president, the president-elect, and the uh, general secretary of Toastmasters and presented a prod product to us. We talked uh, for probably the better part of an hour with them. And uh, so we will be moving forward with that. It should be rolling out within the next 12 months or so. We, um, at, at the January meeting, we approved that the Honolulu Convention in 2020 will be on, available online. I've had several questions this year about, uh, will, be, will we be streaming from Hamburg? There will be a few sessions that are straight, uh, live streamed, but next year in Honolulu, the whole convention will be available purportedly via live stream. Uh, Melbourne, Australia was selected as the site of the 2023 convention. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we selected the individual and the association to receive the alum Rotary Alumni Global Service Award and the alum Global Alumni Association of the Year. We approved 75 recipients for the 2018-2019 Service Above Self Award. Uh, in the areas of administration, the Mark Maloney's uh, committee assignments and his officer appointments were approved for next year. Alinka Babalola, who goes by Yinka from Nigeria, will be our vice president next year. And yours truly will be serving as the treasurer of Rotary International next year. Francesco Arezzo from Italy will be the chair of the executive committee. We also updated our policy on adult harassment and asked the general secretary to provide training resources to clubs and to district leaders uh, regarding providing har har harassment free environments. And we, uh, what has been come inadvertently uh, to the forefront was we agreed to submit to the 19, 2019 Council on Legislation, a statement of support for Council Item 19-117, which is to authorize the RI Board to take appropriate action to change RI's tax status to a 501c3. I'm sure that everyone will be interested in this last item. We approved spending from the Rotary Foundation unrestricted funds to increase the World Fund match from 50 cents to $1 for every district designated fund com contributed to the Polio Plus program and further increase the annual maximum contribution from $5 million to $10 million. So this goes into effect July 1. This particular item, we've not made, made a public announcement per se. It is public knowledge, but we've not bantered it yet, if you will, because of the concern that it might uh, negatively impact the contributions for the uh, next three months, but, if, but feel free to go ahead and talk about it in your districts and in your clubs as you're going on. There has been a lot of uh, talk and I've sent emails to all of our uh, governors and past governors and past officers and future officers in districts, uh, within districts in zones 33 and 34 about item 19-117. The board, with a unanimous vote, agreed to p pass this to the council. It's not something that happened this year or even this month. The, the talk has been going on about converting Rotary International to a 501c3 for about three years. There was concern of above one mem about from one member that has been on the board of trustees for the period of time that the Rotary International was trying to take over the foundation. Uh, and so what happened was two years ago, or not two years ago, but it, then a board passed. There was a task force formed of joint, jointly with trustees and directors to work through these issues, make sure everyone st uh, understood uh, uniformly and agreed. That happened. The board, both of the boards took a vote. The board of directors was unanimous. The board of trustees was unanimous except for one vote. So it wasn't unanimous, but there was one vote against it. All the other votes were in favor. 
um, the one that was from the chair. Uh, and there were comments made by the chair that were probably um, pretty, that are in the, that were pretty prob possibly inappropriate. Uh, and then in January, there was actually a vote taken by both book bodies to pass this item over. Uh, after we had gone all the way to having a, a joint operating agreement that would preclude anything of the, the, the board of directors trying to of the Rotary trying to take over the Rotary Foundation, uh, a, a, the boards took action to approve this joint operating agreement. The board of directors approved it unanimously. The board of trustees approved it again with one nay vote from the chair. Uh, and there were still comments that were made. The, I need to explain to you all so to, that you understand the reason to provide for uh, the, yeah, those, those of you that are texting me saying, I can't see you. Yeah, I know I've got a problem. I don't know what it is. We'll clear it up later. I'm sorry. The, the reason for the, and the really only reason for Rotary International to apply for tax free status is to save money on income taxes. I mean, let's take zones 33 and 34, for example. When we went to Norfolk, rec Norfolk recognized our foundation's tax-free status. We considered that a training and education of it because all of it really was training and education for our members. And we saved something like fifteen to $17,000 in state income tax that we didn't have to pay. That number at the Rotary International level is just phenomenal, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, that could that could not be paid by us, and that's the real reason that we're asking for that. But we'll see how it goes. Um, the board of trustees is pretty upset with their chairman right now, and uh, I don't know what actions they'll take. Not quite sure what, if anything, the board of directors would have to say. But uh, right now, we're all concentrating on a number of items that will be considered at the council. Another item that is not controversial, but it is a major item that is being considered at the council. It appears that there is broad-based support. It is a constitutional amendment, so to pass it would take a 66% vote, uh, and that item is on Rotaract. I want to make sure you hit, heard it. If you're not a council in legislation, make sure you, a uh, delegate, make sure you heard it from me so you can weigh in on it if you need to with your representative. <clears throat> the um, Rotor, Rotaract and Interact are programs of Rotary. They are not membership types. They are programs of Rotary, have been since the very beginning. There are places in the world where Rotaract is bigger than Rotary and the number of Rotaract clubs are more than the Rotary in, in some districts. Kim and I were uh, served as a president's rep two years ago in a place where that was just the case. They had more Rotaractors at their district conference than they did R Rotarians. So the item number 19-72 is to make it possible for Rotaract clubs to become members of Rotary just like Rotary clubs are members. Now, the membership will be a subordinate membership, and Rotaract is Rotaractors, the Rotaract Committee, Rotaract all over the, uh, all over the uh, globe have weighed in on it and say they're okay with it. And uh, what it would be would be a subordinate membership where they would not have, Rotaractors would not have a vote on the Council on Legislation, uh, and they would pay, they will pay dues but it would be a discounted due based on the number of items that the board is considering. Uh, but that gets them into our database. It allows them to, uh, it would get them into our database. It would allow them to take advantage of foundation programs, uh, just a myriad of things and recognizing Rotaract clubs as a, uh, as a membership type in Rotary, just like Rotary clubs are. Um, so with that, I, uh, I will um, open the floor up to any questions or comments um, that anybody has to make. And if you'll just ask to be recognized, and it can be coordinators or any of the people on the call. Currently we have 43 people on the call. And actually before I uh, open it up, I wanna say one thing. 
this month we or this quarter we invited I invited Stephanie and I the uh, governors the governors elect and the governor's nominee was uh, and I've told them uh, simply as a test to let them see what goes on on the call me communicating you all coordinators communicating with the rest of you and me about what you've got going on in your area and your zone and then me talking about things that have happened in in at the last board meeting and that are pertinent to see if the uh, governor's classes want to have a separate call where we could have uh, a lot more conversation than maybe we will have this month but uh, the um, a couple of questions that I've gotten up when would the Rotaract become a full Rotarian um, the Rotaract would become a Rotarian at the point that they joined a Rotary Club. Currently, they can be a Rotarian and a Rotaract at the same time. So a Rotaractor would become a Rotarian in a Rotary Club whenever they uh, joined a Rotary Club. As a Rotaractor, if they're a Rotaract Club elected to become a member of Rotary, they would be a member of Rotary, the club would be a member of Rotary International, just like a Rotary Club is. And somebody said a Rotaractorarian, and I guess it is a Rotaractorarian, something like that, if they're a member of both of them. Okay, anyone have questions, comments, or things like you would like to share or uh, add in? Yeah, David, this is Mike Conrad. Uh, Going back to the discussion around moving from a 501 C4 to a C3. Yes. Uh, I'm sure this analysis was done, but uh, is there any impact whatsoever on our charity navigator rating as a result of this move? Because I know I get a lot of mileage in front of a donor when I say that 91 cents of every dollar that, you know, that we contribute goes to our programs. So I, I just I, I just wanted your feedback on that. Okay, the technicality is there should be no impact there whatsoever because Rotary Foundation was, will continue to be, the Rotary Foundation will continue to be a 501c3 corporation. We have already filed with the IRS and we have already formed a new corporation, which is Rotary International Holdings, LLC. We have not, we've gotten the tentative approval from the IRS, but we have not done any merging because in total transparency, the board of directors said, let's take this to the council on legislation and present it out there wide, worldwide. Technically, we are told that we didn't need to do that, but technically from a transparency position, we felt like we should and wanted to. Um, the, if it is approved at the council, then Rotary International, as it currently exists, not the foundation, but Rotary International, will fold into Rotary International Holdings, LLC. And then Charity Navigator would keep uh, tabs on the Rotary Foundation as one entity, Rotary International Holdings as a second entity. Does that okay. help? That, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. <laughs> I know there's a tax advantage, obviously, from going to the 501c3. I, I'm certainly aware of that. So. So the next one, I've got a, a question, and I'll just answer these as we go, maybe. Received an email that the coordinators at call, but the calendar in about so it's 5, 5 p.m. It is by, the call is at 4 p.m., and I just got it uh, slid over on the wrong slide on the calendar. I'll fix that as soon as we hang up. Explain, the, I'm sorry, go for Nancy. No, I was good. You go ahead with that, and then I'll ask my question. The DDA, DDA match from 50% to 100% or explain to me personal letter. Okay, uh, the, the match, the world fund match of 50 cents on a dollar when district designated funds are used to the, go to the Polio Plus program will go from 50 cents currently as of July to one to $1. Okay, so if you give a dollar, the world fund will match a dollar which will then get matched by Bill Gates. And there's also, that was an annual maximum of $5 million, and it has gone to a maximum of $10 million that we would match in that manner. Would the district benefit and have tax savings as well if this goes through? 
um, the districts will not automatically become 501c3s if that is your question. But if this goes through, we expect that we will take it to the next point that districts that do not have their own uh, 501c3 status could uh, apply for that. Um, but we've not worked through all the legal technicalities of that yet. You are a 501c3 as a member of Rotary International. We're still working on through the technicalities of being a 501c3-4. We're working through the technicalities of a 501c3 at the club level, okay? And that's the best I can answer that for you. What level of dues is being proposed for Rotary actors? That, that is very much in consideration right now, but we have deferred upon it. And a formal act staff has been working on this for uh, about four months. Uh, to propose a, le a level, and uh, they will propose a level at the um, next meeting, but it will depend somewhat upon whether this piece of legislation uh, is approved or not, uh, because if it is approved, then the dues would be higher because there's a lot more that the Rotaract Club can garner in terms of positive um, in, uh, positive impact to the Rotaract Club as a Rotary Club, as a member of Rotary, not a, a program of Rotary. So more news at 11 about the exact amount, somewhere probably between two and seven dollars. So I don't know if it'll be closer to two, but or closer to seven, but it's somewhere probably in that range. How does one apply for a Rotary Global Grant? Chris, I'll get with you offline on that, get you the name of the person because I know what the program is and I know it's being tested, but I don't exactly know. It's not being tested in our area, so I'd have to get you to the person to see if you can uh, get involved in it. Uh, not, not, not a global grant, just to be clear. Not a global grant, a global member. It is right. a global membership program and it is being test marketed uh, in certain areas, but it's not in, being tested in our zones that I'm aware of. So I have to get you the contact at Rotary to talk to, to uh, see if you can get involved in that if you'd like to as part of the project. Thanks, David. And there was someone else up there had that question. And uh, anybody else? Okay, we are at 59, at one hour exactly on my clock, it's still about 13 minutes till. Uh, I'll leave the floor open. How does our status as a 501c3 affect the other countries? It does not affect the other countries directly. It does affect them indirectly in that if we are approved in the United States, then the savings, they would get the benefit of the tax in, income tax or sales tax savings that, we, that would, they would inure to the whole organization but there is no direct impact there. And what's, uh, or any of you may be, I don't know, some of you may be, uh, uh, some of you may be, how did I start that? Um, some of you may uh, be Council on Legislation members. And uh, so in the other countries, a lot of the time they won't vote because they don't understand it. It's not applicable to them. They don't vote. And so it could very well not pass because it's got to have a 66% approval rate, but could very well not pass because country, other countries, if we can't make them understand that all they tend to do is, is benefit from it. Uh, that could be a situation for us. Any other questions? Okay, well, all of you, uh, what would happen to the club uh, status that comes under the offices of our eyes 401c4? That's why we've got to work out the part with the 501c3 for the clubs, uh, if it is approved. But there's really no need for us to do anything for either the 501c4 or working toward the c3 of the clubs until we get this approved at the Council on Legislation. Okay, so I appreciate all of you being on the call today with us. As I said, the next call uh, from our Doodle survey that we did last night and this morning will be May 14th at 4 p.m. And I'll change the calendar invite. Uh, I think it went out correctly in the email, but the calendar invite I will correct. Uh, if you're a gover in the governor's chain and join us with the meeting for the meeting today, I appreciate you being here. 
and we'll be following up with some a questionnaire there about how we would use this uh, for our benefit or not at the uh, district governor level. And with that, if, if I'll give, open the floor for a moment, if no one else has anything, and then I'll end the meeting. Anyone? David, uh, Mike Davidson, just a comment. As you know, President Barry and Esther will be in our district on Friday evening uh, just to uh, help us celebrate the six clubs uh, in our district who over the past 15 months have marked their 100th anniversary. And uh, we look forward to that. Uh, we've got a great turnout signed up and uh, he's all set and satisfied with our arrangements for that. So. Uh, Anything you'd like me to pass on to them, just let me know. Otherwise, that's all. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Did I? Uh, Sheila? Sheila uh, I just wanted to gloat and say, well, we've got Barry here tomorrow. <laughs> all right, everybody say hey to Barry tomorrow and, and Friday, so, uh, or next Friday. All right, thank you all for coming, and I will end the meeting at this point. Thank you.